Hello, dear students. Welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterization, lecture number 15. I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmed. In this lecture, uh, we will continue our discussions on the transmission electron microscopy. Uh, so here on, we will uh, have a discussions on uh, specimens preparations for uh, TEM. So let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture, that is uh, specimen preparations for the TEM. So there are four basic techniques uh, where which we can prepare the sample uh, for the transmission electron microscopy, or we can say that uh, depending upon the nature of the sample, uh, we, can, we, we have a different technique uh, in order to characterize that uh, with the help of a transmission electron a microscope. So uh, the, uh, th this is the, the first technique uh, or the first type of the sample uh, that we run uh, in the TEM. Uh, so uh, in this particular uh, technique, uh, the specimen for the TEM are typically uh, supported on three millimeter diameter grid, uh, which you can see it here. Uh, and this is usually made of the copper. I mean, th this is uh, uh, just because of that is called TEM copper grid. So uh, the sample is normally supported on uh, this uh, typical uh, a copper grid. So these grid often have thin carbon film, uh, which you can see it here, and that's been suspended across them, uh, which may be continuous, uh, holy or uh, lacy. So these are the carbon film, uh, which you can see that uh, it's a continuous uh, a lacy type uh, film. Uh, so that's been inside uh, this copper grid. So that is normally used to support the sample. Uh, inside uh, the TEM. So specimens for the TEM uh, need to be less than 100 nanometer in thickness uh, in order for the electron to pass uh, through it and form an image. Uh, so this is the requirement for the sample in order to be analyzed inside the TEM. So the sample should have a thickness, a thickness less than 100 nanometer and here is the reason uh, why we need uh, a sample with the thickness less than 100 nanometer. Uh, so uh, the reason for uh, 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 this purpose is that uh, that uh, electron we actually want the electron to pass through the through the sample. So that's why uh, we are saying that its thickness should be less than 100 nanometer. As the thickness is greater than 100 nanometers, then uh, I mean we may not be able to pass the electron through the sample and the sample may not be properly uh, characterized. That's why, uh, I mean, we are saying that in order to be best uh, analyzed with the help of the TEM, so the sample thickness should be less than 100 nanometers uh, because we want the electron to pass through that uh, sample and in order to form an accurate image and argument factor for uh, that particular sample. So for some materials, I mean, you know that there are different type of the material that we characterize with the help of TEM. So for some materials, uh, uh, which we, we can take that first example of inorganic uh, powder. So for inorganic powder, uh, the specimen preparation is extremely uh, straightforward and simply involves grinding the material to a fine powder. I mean, uh, the sample preparation for inorganic material is uh, very simple. Uh, so what actually we need, uh, uh, we just need to uh, grind the powder. And then uh, after that, once we grind the, uh, the sample into the powder, fine powder, uh, then we uh, disperse that powder into a liquid. So after that, we uh, pipetting onto the grid and, and allowing it to uh, dry. I mean, it's, uh, it's a very simple procedure for an organic sample. I mean, first we make into a fine powder, then we disperse it into a, a suitable liquid. And after that, we are pivoting into a grad uh, and allow them to dry. Uh, as for the organic or biological materials, uh, so they are more, uh, there are more specialized uh, techniques. They require more specialized uh, techniques because we, uh, uh, we don't want the sample to be damaged. Uh, we, we want the, uh, the material to be uh, exactly characterized the way uh, we need the information. So for the biological or for organic samples, uh, we need some special uh, precautions. So uh, small biological structures uh, like viruses and bacteria uh, that can be deposited on a carbon film from solutions. 
uh, but would give very little contrast in the untreated state. Uh, so what it means, it means that uh, if you want to analyze the biological sample, uh, the good example of the biological samples uh, which we can characterize with the help of TAMS are viruses and bacteria. So we, uh, if we just deposit them on the carbon, uh, I mean on the carbon film inside the copper grid, so uh, the contrast will be, uh, the contrast, we will get the contrast, but the contrast will not be as good uh, uh, as uh, we need it uh, to accurately characterize uh, the viruses or the bacteria. So in such a cases, uh, the technique of negative uh, staining is often used to reveal the structures. I mean, in order to accurately uh, visualize or uh, reveal uh, the structures of the viruses or bacteria or other biological structures. So uh, we need to do the negative staining of that uh, uh, materials. Uh, so negative staining is required to uh, accurately reveal the structures uh, of that uh, particular uh, materials. So uh, what is mean by negative staining? Uh, negative staining uh, involves uh, surrounding the biomolecules with a thin amorphous layer of heavy metal salt. So uh, this reveals the structures and reduces the, uh, the structure uh, flattening uh, that occur in the absence of the, uh, in the, absence of the uh, stain. So commonly used uh, stain, uh, the most commonly used stains, uh, I mean, uh, the type of the stain that is most openly utilized uh, are uh, as following. That is, uh, we have uh, urinal uh, acetate. So urinal acetate, uh, I mean, it's been utilized here in this uh, micrograph, 10 micrograph. So here it's been utilized for uh, uh, adi uh, adenovirus uh, that is as a negative on the stains. Uh, so uh, urinal acetate is being uh, utilized as a negative stain for uh, adenovirus. Uh, so uh, the other types, uh, the other uh, most commonly type of the stains uh, which can be uh, utilized uh, are uh, sodium, potassium, uh, passport and state, uh, ammonium, uh, molybdate, uh, etc. I mean, uh, there are other material which can also be utilized uh, as a stains uh, for biological uh, structures. So, an alternative to negative uh, staining, uh, we also have uh, positive staining. So, uh, in positive staining, uh, the heavy metal salt is selectively stained uh, with certain feature within the sample, uh, which enable them to be uh, visualized. I mean, just like the, the, the negative staining, we also have the positive staining. And the positive staining, we have uh, heavy metal salt uh, that selectively stains certain uh, feature within the sample. Uh, which en uh, enable them to uh, visualize. So salt used for positive staining include uh, urinal acetate, uh, lead acetate, uh, osmium uh, tetroxide, and uh, ruthenium uh, tetroxide. So these are the material uh, which can be used as a, a positive staining. So positive staining is often used in studying polymer samples and which two different phases are present. So positive staining, I mean, uh, is here uh, we just describing the purpose of positive staining. So positive staining, uh, what was, uh, I mean, it's mainly required and studying the polymer sample. What type of the polymer sample uh, in which two different phases are present? I mean, uh, those polymer samples in which two different phases uh, are present, uh, they are being uh, uh, analyzed and the term with the help of uh, positive staining. Uh, for a good contrast. So it is necessary to choose a stain uh, which attaches itself to one component but not to the others. So that, that is that, uh, the key uh, aim of this is uh, to uh, have a good contrast. So the example on the right, uh, on the right is the block uh, uh, copolymers. Uh, so here you can see that. Uh, so it is uh, polystyrene B uh, methyl methacrylate. Uh, which has been st uh, stained uh, with uh, ruthenium tetroxide. So the ruthenium, te uh, uh, the ruthenium tetroxide is preferentially stains uh, the polystyrene. Uh, so this component appears dark in the image. Here you can see that uh, these dark structures. 
So it's been, uh, uh, I mean, the, the polystyrenes, uh, uh, so that you can see it uh, uh, inside the temp uh, micrograph. And we can also, for biological samples, uh, we can also use a technique that is called uh, microtomy. So uh, what is microtomy? So the, the pull procedure are the setup for sample preparations. Uh, you can see it here. So it's the, uh, I mean, it's the sample pre uh, preparation technique uh, uh, that is as a whole is called uh, microtomy. So uh, uh, in order to prepare the temp specimens from biological tissues, uh, so it is necessary to embed uh, the fixed tissue in, uh, in a reason and then produce uh, 10 sections uh, using uh, a microtome. So this is a microtome. So here you can see that uh, we have a tissue and this tissue is being placed here. So it's a, a specimen block. Uh, uh, this is a specimen holder and this is a specimen block. So we have a knife here. With the help of that, uh, with the help of that knife, we, we cut the sections of that uh, tissues. Uh, so then uh, we put it on the a microscopic slide and out of that we get a section one section that we put on the copper mesh thread uh, for the TM characterization. So the section are then uh, this sort of sections uh, I mean after uh, being placed on microscopic slide uh, is being then placed on the on the grid uh, and uh, stains. Uh, stains uh, accordingly I mean uh, uh, according to the sample characteristic uh, is being positive or negatively uh, stained. So microtomy is uh, also used for other soft materials such as uh, polymer. So microtomy is also a technique which can be utilized for uh, biological sample analysis inside uh, the TEM. So the, the most, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the most open type uh, or the most uh, uh, common type of the, uh, the specimens uh, which we can uh, uh, I mean, by by means of which uh, we can uh, prepare uh, the sample. Uh, I mean, the the tissue sample for uh, the TM analysis uh, is called a microtomy. Or in sample world, uh, microtomy uh, microtomy is the technique by which we can prepare the uh, tissue uh, sample for uh, transmission electron microscopy. Uh, similarly with this, uh, I mean, uh, it's a, a sample preparation technique for the TEM. So with this a sample preparation technique, we can also prepare a sample of soft material uh, such as polymer for uh, transmission electron microscopy analysis. So that's all we have for this lecture. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the uh, next lecture uh, that will be on uh, astigmatism and aberrations of lenses and transmission electron microscopy. So stay tuned for the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.